Aloha, my name is Elaine Gallant, and I am your host of Books, Books, Books on Think Tech Hawaii. This is a show where we talk about reading books, writing books, and everything in between and beyond. Today's show is titled On Knowing Author Catherine Knorr, and our guest, of course, is Catherine Knorr. Aloha, Catherine, and welcome to Books, Books, Books. Aloha, Elaine. It's great to be here. Super. Now, you and I first met about five or six years ago at the Kauai Writers Conference, and I was thoroughly mesmerized by the amount of your energy, your positivity, your your movement, and how you were going from one thing to another. So it doesn't surprise me. You are as accomplished as you are. So I want to talk about all of that. Can we do that? All right, super. Yeah. <laughs> First off, you're an author. You have five books, four of which are fiction, and one is not. Would you like to talk about this? Sure. Um, my first book is Managing Risk in Sport and Recreation. That's a nonfiction book, and um, that was published in 2009. And then... Um, you know, that one essentially is a textbook about um, sports and law and risk management. And I voted myself the least likely to finish a novel. I was involved in a writer's group that got together after the, you know, the Maui Writers Conference was very popular. And I went to that for many years. And you know, it's a, it was amazing with all these famous authors. And now the Kauai Writers uh, Conference is kind of similar. But what was really interesting is after the Maui Writers Conference stopped, they tried to do it on Oahu. And I went and I met these wonderful people and we had a writers group. And I I was really intimidated by them. I thought, oh, these are really good writers. And we all started writing a novel. And I thought there's no way I'm going to be the one that never publishes a novel and they're all going to publish novels. And it took me quite a long time to write that first novel. But I was the first of our group to publish. And I ended up writing three pretty much before anyone else published a novel. And so I've actually written four in that series, the Triangle series. And it all started from that writer's group where we wrote 10 pages a month. And I actually often wrote my pages while I watched TV. <laughs> <laughs> Writer's groups are amazing. They really are the catalyst for a lot of authors that give them the impetus to finish their novels. Um, because you're, you're, you have to read to the group, you get critiqued by the group, you make contacts, you learn the industry, and you go from there. Now, we should mention that you're an attorney by trade. Sure. You're a former per diem judge. And you have your own show. And it, uh, the title of it is, go ahead and say it because I have the whole title. The Wide World of Esports. Wide World of Esports, which is an up and coming uh, trend in entertainment and competition. So let's talk about your Triangle series first. Uh, when you wrote those three novels, and now you say you have a fourth one. So now you have five books total. So that's great. Um, why don't you talk about this? I read Land Sharks. I did not have the pleasure of reading Free Wheel or VO2 Max. So why don't you tell us about those? Okay, so the first in the series is Land Sharks. And let's bring up the Land Shark. Okay, <laughs> so actually, um, Land Sharks is really what I know. And I, I thought it would be easier to write about what I know rather than do research. And it essentially is about an attorney working for a firm and she's a triathlete and she, um, you know, kind of, there's some mystery, there's some romance in there. And the, the firm that she worked for is loosely based on the firm that I worked at. And <laughs> when attorneys from that firm read it, they really laugh because even though I, my characters are not any individual people, they might be composites or there might be a little element that they recognize. But well, anyway, 
I'll tell you that much. Sometimes people don't. <laughs> so, what, you know, what's kind of funny about it is I, you know, most law books, law fiction, there's some big trial. And that's, you know, the kind of the finale. And you kind of expect that. Well, I didn't want to do that because it's completely unrealistic. I wanted to write about civil litigation as it really is. And civil litigation is basically depositions and motions and then kind of the negotiations to try to settle a case and the interactions between the people at the firm and the people and your interactions with opposing counsel. So that's really what I put in there. And Zena West, the protagonist, she is a triathlete. She's young and I tried to make her as much not like me as possible. Um, so I make her really tall with black hair. And <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, oh dear. and she has this love interest and everything. And it's really fun. It starts out with with a accident that happens um, in, during the um, the uh, Olympic trials and where um, a car drives onto the race course and kills one athlete and and renders another one uh, uh, paralyzed and the paralyzed one files a lawsuit and yes. you know we kind of just try to discover whether it's fraud or not and then then there's free will is the second. Yeah, but before you go into free will I want to say that you know I read Land Shark and I think that that was a very good first novel uh, you covered a lot of bases the the tri the triathlete's life uh, what can go wrong? So it brings in your your lawyer skills as as far as risk in sports goes. I think um, I, I found it quite a fun read, and I just want you to know that. And I think a lot of people have. So I just want to point that out. Everybody should read Land Sharks, and then go on from there. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And then free will. Let's bring up the CN Tower. Free will kind of has some elements like like a, a Lance Armstrong type character um, who gets kicked out of uh, pro cycling um, and uh, does triathlons. And he starts a charity called Free Will. And we have, and he his love interest is a claims adjuster who who uh, works with, um, with Zena West um, in her litigation. And there's, you know, it's kind of more, more, you know, kind of mystery and, and relationships and has, it's kind of, you know, similar, but it has kind of a different mystery and it's, it's good fun. And then, and then the third one, VO2 Max, uh, VO2 Max is a rags to riches story. And it answers the question of what, what would happen if, um, pro actually triathlon was monetized where pro, pro triathlon athletes made money like golfers or tennis players. And the picture that you just saw was, um, I was actually in Tokyo and um, uh, some, you know, uh, people with a TV show came up to me and said, do you want to do this game show? And so I did this, they'd film this game show and I was a contestant or something like that on the street. That's fun. You've had some fun promoting your books, I must say. And we're going to talk about that as well. But let's talk about Zena West. Is that your fourth in this Triangles series? Or is there one that we don't know about yet on your website? Okay, so um, Zena West Diary, and you can pull up the museum shot. Um, Zena West Diary is the prequel to um, the series. And it basically is Zena's childhood. and Zena had a really tough childhood. She was homeless. She, her, her mom died of a heart attack when she crossed the finish line of a marathon. Her, uh, her dad, uh, he became a heroin addict and Zena went from foster home to foster home. And, um, she had really a challenge and, and Zena West diary is it's a YA book. If people don't know what that means, it's a young adult book. However, a lot of adults read it. In fact, I think that more adults have read it than kids. And um, I actually, in one of my writers groups, um, one of the gals, she said that her granddaughter read it and said it was her favorite book of all time. But oh it, 
it actually what it is, it's really interesting. Um, I wanted to do this diary story and but it was so boring, you know, to read someone's diary. So what I did is I I Bless your aunt. pardon me. Bless your Anne Frank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> What I did is I got another story and I intertwined it with hers. So I have another girl who found the diaries in a car that her parents gave her and they were in the trunk. And so she was reading them and they were impacting her life. So it's going, it goes back and forth between um, a story. Her name is Story San- Sanchez. And it goes back and forth between her life and Zena's. Yes, I've read that one too. And I like the dual storyline. I'm wondering, um, this is a yaw book for sure, I have to say. And if I could use that term for sure, I, it makes me sound young, even though I'm not. But um, what, what is your target audience for the other three, for, her, for the Triangle series? Who, who is your target audience? You know, I, I think anyone can read those who just likes to read and is interested in in kind of contemporary fiction and you know it appeals to people who like to read legal mysteries it appeals to people who want to learn something because a lot of people tell me that they learned about triathlon from reading my books they didn't know what that was about and they learned from that and um and i've had a lot of people who just have nothing to do with law or nothing to do with triathlon or insurance and they read them and they're entertained. So if you want to be entertained, I think that that would work. And how many triathlons have you done? I've done a lot, but I quit doing triathlons um, in 2003. So it's been quite a while. But you're still active in sports. I, I know that you do a lot of exercise, jazzercise and all of that. Um, I wanted to ask you, let's, let's talk about some of the famous people who have held your book, read your book. Uh, posed with your book. You want to okay, talk about- let's pull up um, Christy Yamaguchi. Yes. And the Royals. Yes. And <laughs> pro triathlete. Oh, gosh. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah Lego, Lego Man. Lego Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's Donkey. <laughs> Actually, the Donkey <laughs> picture is kind of fun because I was in Hydra. Um, in the Greek Isles, and yeah. I had the idea that a, that the donkey that had to bring our luggage up to the room had to <laughs> call my book. <laughs> it gives a whole new definition to book tour. <laughs> yeah. There's another famous person, Christine Linders, as well. Um, yeah. uh, she um, actually, if you also show the one with me at, um, we were at Grand Central Station um, posing with with our with my books and that was good fun that is fun now i happen to know that you are a world traveler as am i and we have found ourselves in locations at the same time and actually gotten together which is very fun you give speeches you talk about um risk management in sports uh do you want to talk about that part of your of your well it's not your writing but of your profession because it but it does tap into your writing it's at, in a lot you know in, in a great degree. So would you like to talk about that? Yeah, actually, you know, it does tie in with writing because um, my partner in North Sports Risk Management and I wrote a chapter for a um, textbook on crisis communication and sport. Um, and we our our chapter is on using wearables for crisis communication in big events that uh, cover a large area like the Boston Marathon, for example. Um, and, you know, and we address this issue of um, how to use um, high tech, like robotics, drones, wearables um, for crisis communication in those. And we're actually, uh, you know, so that chapter um, is, is we just completed it. We just submitted our final draft for the book um, about a week ago, and uh, we are actually speaking at a conference in Doha, Qatar, um, uh, the site of the World Cup that's going on right now. That's in March. And we have five presentations that we're going to be making. I've never made that many at a conference, but it should be 
It should be fun. Yes. And if you go to Catherine's website, if we can show that as well, it gives her her tour schedule. If anybody would like to meet Catherine in person, talk to her about her books or or her a, a, a attorney side of her life. I mean, you also do workers' comp claims. I mean, not claims, but what else do you do with that? You do workers' comp and you do, do, you do other things as well. You do other litigations. I, I'm an insurance defense attorney and I handle litigation uh, matters um, anywhere from auto to coverage to property. And then I've recently taken on work comp defense. I don't, re I represent the employers. Yes, I understand. Okay. Now, so where are you off to next? Uh, it's Is Doha, the next one? Doha, Doha and Dubai. We're going to Dubai. Yeah. But you know, you mentioned our, our running into each other. It's like how, how crazy is it that the only times I've ever seen you is in travel situations and like in London and in, in Athens, Greece, and yes. not, you know, and crazy things where walking, walking through Athens and running into you, <laughs> <laughs> even though yeah. I mean, had seen each other earlier, but then we're just <laughs> like walking, you know, we're in, I'm in a store and you and you and your sister come into the store and, and run into me. So that's kind of. No, it's crazy. And we're from this little tiny island uh, called Maui, right? Well, I'm Maui, you're Oahu, but we come from this little tiny state and we end up in the craziest places at the same time. So that is quite fun. Um, let's talk about your esports. You have a show, Wide World of Esports. How's that working out for you? And tell us what is esports? Because people, I mean, I don't know what it is. I know it's an up and coming trend in recreation. Yeah. Um, you know, Esports is competitive gaming and it's competitive video gaming. And the interesting things is video gaming is the broader entertainment segment. And esports is the competitive uh, video gaming where it's particular titles like um, League of Legends, um, Valorant, um, uh, G GS Go. I mean, just it's a very particular thing. And I've my show has been going on since July of 2020, and I've had over 100 shows. And it was weekly until more recently. And it's been a great way to meet people all over the world. Yes, it's also been one of the more popular shows, right? Sure. You've been in, you know, first position, second position for um, shows. It just goes to show you that the world is... Um, accepting esports and is curious about it if they're not already directly involved and besides the fact that you're just a charming person anyway so <laughs> i would i would well, want to just <laughs> you know the crazy thing is i moderated a panel on powerful women in esports this morning on linkedin okay. live so this is my second show for the day <laughs> wow and who's the important women in the esports do we know any of them okay. One of them was Steffi Bao, who's interesting because she was a professional motorcycle um, racer, and then she got into esports. And and you know, it's just kind of an amazing story. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of interesting people to meet. Um, so you can watch my show and uh, and uh, you know, meet lots of people in the esports world. Okay, let's go back to books because that's what the show is all about. Of your all your books, which is your favorite? Which is the most? Which is your favorite? Which is the most popular? And are you making money? You can live on it. <laughs> okay, I can't make <laughs> any money on them, <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you that um, probably the most popular is Land Sharks. Um, probably, um, I mean, I think probably the best is Zena West Diary. Yeah, and I think that one of my favorite I, I i think i have to admit that free will and vo2 max have places in my heart that are you know that are important like you know vo2 max is like the rags to riches story i always wanted to write a rags to riches story and that that's inspirational and the message that is in free will is to me i can't even believe that no one's no one is talking about free will um because free will you know, I kind of imagine this incredible charity, the Free Will um, Organization, which 
to me should hap- should be happening in real life. And I, you know, it's just too bad people haven't really read Free Will much. Um, so I encourage people to read Free Will if they have an interest in learning about a nonprofit that would be kind of cool. It's basically um, this concept of having, you know, how how we put our time and our money and our efforts into people that we don't even know, but it's instead putting putting that effort into your own this circle of the your own circle like it's like creating this circle of of influence in terms of um providing help to people it's amazing how what we do in life can affect our imagination for what we want in life right sure. and as we have our own work we get to we get to de- devise and divine this uh these concepts so what is it about writing that you like the most i mean you're a very busy woman i know that you are Uh, How do you find time to write? I just don't understand it. Well, you know, when I was writing those novels, I tried to spend some time every day writing. And usually I had, you know, a a goal to finish that particular book. I love the creativity and creating those worlds. And, and, um, you know, it's just, it becomes very exciting. I have a number of of manuscripts that I haven't finished or that I have finished and I haven't published. Um, and they usually, they're usually born out of some idea and sometimes they start a book and I never even get into it. I just get some crazy idea and it's yes. really fun. Yeah. Sometimes those are good for short stories. Are you doing any short stories? Do you do any anthologies? Are you in any? Yeah. Um, we just published, um, Island Fever, which is an anthology with, um, that we actually had a show a couple of weeks ago on Community Matters, where I hosted and we had three of the authors. Island Fever is a Hawaii book, and it has a theme of fever like COVID or dengue fever or love fever. And we all wrote, wrote chapters. My chapter um, or my story is called Honeymoon. And um, I love that story. I'd never written a short story before, but I really love that story, Honeymoon. And the crazy thing about that story is I had COVID at the time that I wrote it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now, I, 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 I like short stories myself. I, my first novel, The Fifth C, a CAA novel, came out of a short story called Kostro Kost- uh, Smurti. And if anybody speaks Russian, they'll understand what that means, Kosto Smerti, uh, but it became the basis for my novel. So yes, we can create full f- fictions from short stories and vice versa, and I hope that you will. I hope you continue to write. I hope you continue to entertain us. You're a lovely writer. I wish you great success. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm happy to know you. I'm, I'm happy to be interviewing you. So Thank you for being on the show. I would also like to thank, I would also like to thank the underwriters, uh, the technicians, Jay Fidel, uh, everyone on the staff of Think Tech Hawaii. You are a fabulous group of people doing a wonderful job of promoting everything and anything of interest to everyone. Congratulations. All right. Thank you so much, Elaine. You're welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.